Okay, so now let's look at images. And images are obviously important within our communication system because uh, we're transmitting either image files or we could be transmitting video in the form of images. So uh, up to now we've actually seen the compression methods that we actually use and we'll see how these actually apply into files such as GIF files. At the core of what we have is uh, the colours red, green and blue. So the colours that, that we create are uh, a mixture of red, green and blue or RGB. With our camera we have uh, sensors which are sensitive to red, green and blue and then these are then measured uh, to give us our colour value. So we have an intensity uh, range such as from 0 to 255, that's an 8-bit value for red, green and blue. And the higher the value, the more intense the colour is. So the colours that we make up, uh, if we take red, amber and red, green and blue, we make white of full intensity. If we have no uh, value or zero values of red, green and blue, we get black. If we mix red and green together, we get yellow. If we mix red and uh, blue together, we get cyan and so on. So the images that we have uh, are really a merger of the different colours uh, all put together. And then with that, we typically get what's called luminosity. Luminosity is really the brightness. We can see that red, uh, green is quite bright. It has a lot of effect on the luminosity. And something like uh, blue doesn't have a great effect on the luminosity. And somewhere in between, we have red. So our cameras have these sensors. And also our displays have red, green and blue uh, pixels and then the intensity that we have for each of the pixels will make the pixel shine bright or, or not. Okay, so at, but at the core is uh, red, green and blue. But really RGB, red, green, blue, isn't really a very good way of storing colours. It's not really a very good representation uh, of the colours themselves. So often what we do is we convert our colours into other formats so a format typically used in, in, in printing is CMYK and K is quite important because K gives us uh, the, a measurement of black okay, which is obviously very important with inside uh, our, our printing industry and then the other colours they are mixed together to give us the colours that we have cyan, magenta and yellow but what we'll see is that many of the processing methods that we have with inside video and with inside our images is based on uh, Y, U and V. And that's the luminosity, the blueness and the redness. We also define it with Y, C, B and C, R. So in images, we often use that notation. As we'll see in, in video, we often use this notation. This is the way that uh, that that uh, color uh, color motion video is often transmitted in terms of uh, Y, U, and V. With images, we look at C B the blueness and C R the redness. If we want to convert uh, our colors, uh, there are standard formulas that we can actually use. Uh, so a black is all zeros uh, in RGB, where if we look at uh, white, it's all ones or all Fs. Red is obviously full on red and no green and no blue. Uh, here we see blue, that's red, there's no red, no green and then blue there. So then in terms of our colours, we can see here the black intensity has the black uh, color uh, maps to a CMYK of 0001. Okay, so in this way we, we can actually easily translate from from one color scale to, to another. There are many different versions of this scale and many different monitors, many different devices need different types of calibration. So there isn't uh, 
a defined standard for the conversion between the different colors uh, but you you'll find that there there are international standards so the one that we're going to use mainly will be focused on the uh, Y, CB and CR. And with this, we, we convert from red. So we can see here that uh, intensity is equal to 0.2 times red, 0.7 uh, times green and 0 0.07 times blue. So you can actually see that the blue color has very little effect on the intensity, the luminosity, uh, as does green, which has the largest effect. And then red comes in with 0 0.2 there. So green has a three times effect, roughly, uh, more than three times than red. And then red has at least two or three times uh, the effect that blue has on the uh, luminosity. And then when we look at our U value, you can actually see that it's the blue value that makes the, the most effect when it comes to U there. And then for the V value, it's this value here that has the largest effect. The other ones are negative, and that's because we have our red value. Okay, so this is this gives us our color coding. If we wanted to to plot uh, different values of y, so this is uh, y equals to one, so that's quite high intensity. And if we plot the u value and the v, so you can see here we have virtually uh, no uh, u and v value. Over here, we have a maximum value of U, but a small value of V, which gives us mainly blueness. And then if we look, uh, if we take, if we go up the scale, then we can actually see that uh, the value that we have over here has a low U value and a high V value. So it tends to have a great deal of redness around here. So you can actually see that there. There's the redness here, high redness. Down here we have high blueness. And over here we have strong U and strong V. Okay, or this is our redness scale and this is our blueness scale. Okay, so that's the, that's the um, conversions that we have. And we can also go the other way. We can convert from our Y, U and V back into RGB. Okay, so this conversion has happened all the time when we translate our images and also our, our uh, video. And if we look at this uh, image here, so we have an image there. When we process the luminosity, you'll actually see that uh, these areas here are are have high intensity and over here we have low intensity. So luminosity is often used to be able to process our, our images. And then if we look at uh, each of the red, the green and the blue intensities, we can actually see that this part here is very bright uh, and has a good deal has has a great deal of of red in it. And then if we look at the blue we see the picture here has a blue tie and we can actually see that the intensity here is at its, at its fairly high in terms of the blue intensity but the face itself has quite a low uh, level of blue. When we look at the colour in here we actually see black is obviously made up with uh, low values of each of the colours so you can see here Green, red, red, and blue have low values. But when we make up the the shirt here, here, and here, here, and here, we can actually see that these are generating white because each has a high, uh, high has a high intensity. 
Okay, so these images here are showing the intensity of each color. The brighter it is, the more the the more intense the color is. So let's see if we can actually have a look at this link here. Okay, and we'll have a look at another another picture. So let's have a look at John Travolta. Okay, so that's the processed images. That's the luminosity that we're looking at there. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at this picture here. So what we should see is that uh, red has a fairly significant effect on the face here. And we've got at uh, good intensity over here. And the blue blue has very little effect on the on the face. When it comes to the red component, we can see there it's lacking in the hair and also for green and and blue. Okay. So this this gives us uh, uh, an indication really of uh, of the intensities within it, so we can convert them into the required format. Okay, so this is what we have. We have our our camera sensor. So our camera sensor is obviously our RGB, and we might save in 8-bit values. So each pixel might be stored in a raw format. So that's with the RGB format. And if we're storing RGB, then we'll have 24 bits because each of the colors is going to be 8 bits. In this case, because each of the values are, are the same, we'll have a gray value. That's just the way that RGB works. But that's very inefficient and it, would, it wouldn't take that much if we had, say, a, a 10 megapixel camera and we've got three bytes then that's 30 megabytes for every single image that we actually have. So we're really not, we're often not going to store in a raw format. It's good because it gives us the original information and it's what's called it's lossless. Uh, we get our original image back. But what we often do is we often convert into another format such as JPEG or GIF. GIF is a fairly old format, but uh, it's still uh, quite relevant and it uses the LZW uh, method to be able to compress. A much better method and one that's really focused on the way that your eye will observe uh, an image is, is JPEG. And it's really quite well matched to what your eye will actually see. So these can either be lossy. With lossy, when we convert the image back, we will have lost something, or they can be lossless. With lossless, when we convert the image back, it will come back exactly in the RGB format that we actually uh, created in the first place. Obviously, lossy will be much smaller, and lossless will be larger because we've got to add more information in there. But what we'll see is that uh, lossy isn't that bad most of the time because your eye uh, can only perceive certain images, certain, uh, certain parts of the images, especially uh, luminosity. Your eye is very sensitive to changes of, uh, of brightness. So we can make sure the luminosity has good resolution and the color changes really aren't uh, your eye cannot pick up uh, fast changes of colors. Okay, so within our graphics we have obviously the resolution. So that's the number of pixels that we have across and the number that we have down. So if we have 100 pixels by 100 pixels, then we have uh, 10,000 pixels uh, overall. Okay, so that's four zeros that we have there, 10,000 pixels. And if we're going to store, say, three bytes, then that's going to be 30,000 uh, bytes to store that array. Obviously, our cameras now are increasing all the time, and we can get 10 over 10 megapixels. So uh, increasingly, uh, to store a raw format will take up a great deal of, uh, of, of memory. 
And then we have the number of colors per pixel. So that's that's related to the number of bits that we store for each of the each of the colors. Okay, so if we have uh, eight bit, if we have uh, eight bits to store, we'll only get two hundred and fifty six colors. Or if we use twenty four bit color, we'll have two to the power of twenty four, which is sixteen point seven million colors. And this is the standard on most color monitors. As long as they support sixteen point seven million colors, then we can usually render the color quite well. But what we can also do is we can have a palette. So rather than using the full color range, we can actually define a range of colors. We can have any color that we want roughly, but we might only store a thousand colors. Because in any image, look at this image here, I've mainly got red, I've got black, and I've got white, and that, that's about it. I might have a few different shades of red, but uh, I might only need a few colors, and that, what, that defines a palette. Okay, so we have an image resolution, so the more pixels that we have across and down, the higher the resolution will actually be. So the number of pixels that we'll have is X times Y, and then the number of bytes used will be just the number of bytes times the number of pixels that, that we actually have. And our, in our ROS format, we'll have our RAW file, a bitmap is a RAW file, and it just stores these uh, 24 bit values typically. So if we look at some of the, the different formats that we have, we have TIFF. TIFF actually is used in high quality graphics, gives us 48 bit color, even better than a 24 bit color. So if you really want to store high resolution images with good color, then TIFF is a good format and it's used in the publishing industry. It can either use what's called Ruffman R Huffman uh, RLE. We've seen Huffman before, where it might take certain certain colors and it might give them short codes, or it can use LZW. So it's quite a, an efficient method uh, for that. Sixteen bits each for red, green, and blue. GIF is quite popular. With GIF, we can have a twenty-four bit colors, but unfortunately, we can only have two hundred and fifty-six different colors uh, from it. So it's quite good for icons and things like that, and when there's not a lot of change in the color. So we'll often use it for very simple graphics, but certainly not for photographs because they require lots of colors. So the format we often use for colors, and also see for um, uh, MPEG motion uh, video, is the JPEG type standard. With this, we use DCT, as we'll see uh, later, uh, and it also uses quantization in Huffman. It can be lossy or lossless too. Along with this, we have we have many different file formats, Illustrator files, uh, and so on. And each different type has a magic number at the start of it. So a GIF file has 47 hex, 49 hex, 43, 38 or the letters GIF8989. So we can identify our graphics file normally by the, the, um, the actual header, the first few bytes. This here is the start of a PNG file, and what we see is a standard sign of 8950-4047. And in characters, that's an unprinted character, and then a PNG. So let's have a look at some of these. PDF is percent PDF. So here's our magic numbers. These are the ones that I've managed to find. So this is often used in digital forensics and also used in network packet scanning. So if I pick off a JPEG, JPEG starts with an uh, FFD8, TIFF file 4949 or II, but we'll have a look at our GIF file. Okay, so we've got a number of GIF files that you can actually have a look at. And what we should find is at the start of our GIF file, there we go, there's GIF 89A, and there's the sequence that we're actually looking for. Okay, it's possible to trick the system, of course, it's possible to change those characters and the GIF file would still be there. 
Um, and you know, actually see I've actually hidden a little message in the GIF file, so it's possible to even even hide things with within the, the files. Okay, so those are some of the formats that we actually use and they identify the file format and will actually identify how we read the file. So if we look at uh, an image such as this, so in this image uh, it's fairly detailed, there's lots of changes of pixels and so on, lots of different colours of white and blue and, and uh, blue. So you actually see that the size of the file is fairly large, about 300 kilobytes. But as we go down through GIF, GIF manages to get it down to about 124k. TIFF even more, but when we're using uh, we're using monochrome, which is uh, just the the the, the brightness. Uh, so the LZW method is doing quite well here. This is a similar method that we're using there too, so we're getting similar compression rates. But JPEG takes it right down, and we can see here we're down at 28k for something that in the raw format was a 308. The RLE format will come across in the next unit, but RLE is what's called run length coding. It takes long sequences of the same value and crunches it into a small uh, bit pattern. If we now look at a very simple graphic, look at the difference now that, that we have. The bitmap was uh, is absolutely massive, 700 uh, kilobytes. And it's because it's such a big such a such high relatively high resolution and and a lot of colors so storing all these these uh, bytes three bytes for every single uh, pixel that we have but if we look at the runtime length encoded it and we reduce the number of colors that actually has because we're not really using that many colors there i think we've only got about four colors uh, maybe five, one, two, three, four, five, five colors in there. So 256 would be fine. So this has managed to crunch down the, uh, the number of colors to save space and also crunches it down because of the way it encodes. GIF 2 takes it right down to 4K, only 4K, uh, but we've got 256 colors, which is fine because we've not got that many colors in there. TIFF doesn't do as well, but takes it down to 26k, and JPEG does okay. So if you look at it, GIF wins when we have highly redundant information, but as we've seen before, JPEG wins where we have lots of different changes there. And we'll see why that happens uh, a little bit later. But the LZW method is very good at doing this type of thing where we have the common color appearing again and again. Okay, so what we have is that uh, in GIF we have a color table. So the color table is only 256, or the global color table is only 256 entries. They can be 24-bit entries, so they're 3 bytes, but you can only have 256 bits uh, in the color table, which means it's fine for images that uh, have very few colors, but really not very good for things like photographs. And here's the format here. So as we've seen before, there's the first three, three bytes. We then get the version number, the height appears next, and then the, the width and then the height, followed by three bytes uh, defining the color index and uh, the packed and the aspect. And then what we have is the first color that's going to appear. In this case it's black, the image is, sorry, in this case it's white. So the first uh, color that's probably appearing is going to be white. There's lots of white in this image here. This is the second color, third color, uh, and, and so on. So we'll eventually get 256 of those colors. So let's actually have a look at that. Okay, so that's the image that we have. And there is the first few bytes there, and there is the first color. One color, two, two, three, four, and, and so on. Okay, so this is really defining the color table 
with inside the image. And we'll find that each image, each GIF image, has, has the same starting six bytes. And then we look at a little, little uh, Python program. So in the Python program, what we'll get is we'll be able to process uh, the values. So in this case, it's been processed with uh, a width of 100, a width of 100 and a height of 85. And then it's actually giving us the palette that we have here that we saw actually before. And the way that GIF works is to build up our our table. As we've seen before, we start off with our standard table of our values. So in this case, red, blue, green, and we'll add in black. And then the first entry that comes across is red and green, followed by green and blue, and then we have blue and red, and so on. And then red and red, and then red and blue, and then blue and green, and then so on. Okay, so in this way, we actually build up our table, and what we're actually storing is this value here. Okay, so we would we would go from zero, and then we've got a two, and then it would be blue, which is one, and then red, red, red. So we can store the red, red, as as a value seven. Okay, so in this way, we can take the the, the pixel values, and uh, when when they appear. Uh, together, we can store them as their index value with inside the, the the entry. So we must, of course, keep the table uh, with us, and we build the table for each image. Okay, so that's been an introduction into some some basic uh, analysis of, of images, and especially into the GIF. Once we look at JPEG, you'll actually start to see how we we use more efficient methods, which are more attuned to your 